Welcome to KTN Life and Style. This is Artistic Thursday, and I am your host, Susan Jeroge. Now, you know, when you come to Artistic Thursday, this early in the morning, you have come for hype, great, great, great performances, dance, poetry, cultural dances, the whole shabam, poems in Kiswahili, poems in English, and it's always so great watching these students from these schools just give us the wow, the it. So let's get straight into it and enjoy performances, but do not forget, talk to us on our social media, okay? Use the hashtag KTN Life and Style, hashtag Artistic Thursday on Twitter or message our Facebook page, KTN Life and Style. You can talk to me on Twitter if you like. I'm snjeroge underscore on Twitter and Sura Common on Instagram. Now, let's enjoy. You wanted to speak to me? Oh, uh, yes, I do. Today? Today is not the first of the month yet, Mr. Croxton. No, it is Christmas Eve, and it will depend on you, Mrs. Elma, on what kind of Christmas you're going to spend. What do you mean? Today is absolutely No, we'll impossible. talk about that later. This is something different. I suppose you will give me a moment. Yes, I can. Although you Good. I was at Olsen restaurant, and I saw your husband go down the street. Yes. With a lady? What then? Will I make it so bold to ask whether that was Miss Lind? Yes. Just arrived in town? Yes, today. Ah, you and her are quite good friends, she isn't it? She is, but I don't I see I knew her too once upon a time. I'm aware of that. Are you? So you know all about it? I thought as much. Now, can I ask without beating around the bush? Is Miss Lind to have an appointment with the bank? What right have you to question me, Mr. Crockstad? You are one of my husband's subordinates. But since you ask, you shall know. Yes. Miss Lynn is to have an appointment at the bank. And it is I who pleaded her case. I can tell you that. Ah, so I was right in what I thought then. <laughs> you see, when one is a woman, when one has a tiny little bit of influence, it does not necessarily follow that. But when one is in a subordinate position as yours, he should be very careful not to offend anyone. Who has influence? Exactly. Mrs. Elma, will you be so bold as to use your influence on, your, on my behalf? What do you mean? I mean, will you be so good as to see that I do not lose my subordinate position <laughs> at the bank? What do you mean? Who proposes to have your position? Oh, there is no necessity you? to hold up the pretense of ignorance. I quite understand that your friend is not anxious to rub her shoulders with me. And I quite understand whom I have to thank for having been turned but, off. But very likely, but the time has come for me to ask you to use your influence to prevent that. But, um, Mr. Croxton, I have no kind of influence. Haven't you? But I thought you said that just now. Yes, naturally, but I did not mean you to put that construction on it. What makes you think I have any kind of influence? Oh, I have husband? known your husband since our student days. I don't think he's any uh, saleable than any other Mr. husband. Mr. Croxton, if you speak slightingly on my husband, I shall turn you out the house. Oh. You're bold, Mrs. Helma. I am not afraid of you any longer. As soon as the new year comes in, I shall be rid of this whole thing in a short Listen time. Listen to me, Mrs. Helma. I am prepared to fight for my post as if I was fighting for my own life. <laughs> so you and see. it is not for the sake of money. That weighs least in the matter. There is another reason. And I might as well tell you about it. You know very well, like many others, that many years ago, I was guilty of an indiscretion. Mm, I think I have had something of that kind. The matter never came to court. But everywhere seemed to be locked to me. I had to get into a business which you know of. I had to do something. And honestly, I haven't been one of the worst. My sons are growing up, and I must make sure that I gain as much respect as I can in this town. And this post was like my first stepping stone. And now your husband wants to throw me down the staircase into the mud? Mr. Crocs said I am not in the part to help you at it all. It is because you haven't the will, but I have the means to compel you. What? What? Mr. Crocs said, I, 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 I hope you don't mean that you're going to tell my husband ah, that I owe you money. Or to tell him? Well, that would be perfectly infamous of you to think of him learning on my secret. That has been my joy and pride. In such an ugly and clumsy way, and avoid people from you, oh God. That would put me in a horribly disagreeable position. Only disagreeable? Then do it. Do it, Mr. Crockstead. It will only be worse for you because my husband is going to see what a blackguard you are, and you certainly won't keep your I posture. asked you if it was only a disagreeable scene that you're afraid of at home. Mr. Crockstead, mm -hmm. if my husband does get to know that I owe you money, he's of course going to pay you what he's still owing, and then he won't have anything to do with you any longer. Listen to me, Mrs. Elma. Either you have a bad memory or you know very little about business. But I'll be very obliged to remind you of a few details. What do you mean? 
When your husband was ill, you came to borrow 250 pounds. Well, I didn't know who else to go to. I promised to get you the amount. Yes. I promised to get you the amount on certain conditions. Your mind seemed to be occupied with your husband's illness and you are so anxious to go on that journey such that you paid no attention to the conditions of our bargain. And it will not be amiss if I remind you of those conditions. Now, I promised to get you the amount on a security bond which I drew up. And which I signed! Good! Now, down your signature, there are a few lines constituting your father's surety for the money, which your father should have signed. Should? Um, he did, he did sign. He signed them. I had left the date blank. That is to ascertain that your father himself should have inserted the date on the day he did sign the papers. Do you remember? Um, yes. I, I think I remember something of that kind. And I gave you this bond to send it to your father by post? Yes. Which you naturally did because five or six days afterwards, you brought back the bond with your father's signature and I gave you the money. It has been typing things oh, so well, regularly. Clearly so, yes. But to come to the point of matter, that must have been a very trying time for you, Mrs. Selma. Indeed it was. Your father was very ill. He was very near his end. And died soon afterwards? Yes. Mrs. Elma, can you by any chance remember the day that your father died and on what month, I mean? Well, Papa died on 21st of October. That is correct. I can ascertain that. But Mrs. Elma, there is a discrepancy which I cannot account for. What? What discrepancy? What do you mean? The discrepancy itself consists that your father signed this bond three days after his death. No, 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 I don't understand. What do you mean? I, I don't understand. Come on, Mrs. Elma. Your father died on 29th of September. But look here. Your father has dated his signature 2nd of October. It is a discrepancy, isn't it? Can you explain that? Um, well, uh, and it is quite a remarkable thing that the word 2nd of October as well as the year are not written in your father's handwriting, but one of which I know of. Of course. <laughs> of course. It can be explained. Your father might have forgotten to date his signature and someone else did it for him half hazard before he knew of his death. Well, there is no harm in that. The name itself, I suppose it is genuine, Mrs. Elma. Uh, it was your father who signed this form. No, it was I who wrote down Papa's name. Are you aware that that is a dangerous confession? In what way? Mr. Cox said you're going to get your money soon. Mrs. Elma, let me ask you a question. Why did you not send these papers to your father? It was impossible. It was impossible. If I had to ask for Papa's signature, I would have to explain what the money was being used for. And with him so ill, I could not tell him what a dangerous condition my husband's life was in. It was impossible. Then it would have been better if you had given up this trip to abroad no, after all. that is impossible. Huh? That trip was to save my husband's life. And I could not give that and up. Wa it was impossible. And were you aware that you are committing a fraud on me? No. I could not take you into account. Oh, God. I could not bear you. You put so many difficulties on my way. Even if you knew what a dangerous condition my husband's life Mrs. was Mrs. Alma, it is <laughs> evident that you do not understand what it is that you're guilty of. But I can tell you one thing. The fault that has cost me my reputation is nothing more or nothing worse than what you've oh, done. Oh, you? You want to make me believe that you can run a risk to save oh, your wife's life? Oh, the law does not care about motives. Then it must be a very foolish law. Foolish or not, it is still the law and you'll be judged if forced to produce these papers in court. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Is a daughter not allowed to save her dying father and that yet care? Is the wife not allowed to save her husband's life? Sister Croxton, I don't know much about the law. But I do know that there are laws permitting such things. Don't you know these laws? You who are a lawyer, you must be a very poor lawyer, Mr. Croxton, <laughs> Mr. Poor Lawyer. <laughs> Maybe. But in matters of business that you and I had, that I surely understand. Very well then, Mrs. Elma. Do as you please. But let me tell you one thing, Mrs. Elma. If I lose my position a second time, you are losing yours with me. 
You're going down with me. Huh. Be at rest and feel secure. Here is broad wings for you. Here I shall protect you like a hunted dove that I have saved from the hawk's claws. I shall bring peace to a poor beating heart. Little by little, believe me, Nora, tomorrow morning you'll look upon it all quite differently. You won't need me to assure you that I have forgiven you. You will yourself feel the certainty that I have done so. Have no anxiety about anything, and I will serve as will and conscience both to you. What is this? No, not gone to bed. Have you changed your things? Yes, Hover. But what? I have changed my things now. What for? So late as this? I shall not sleep tonight. No. Sit down. It's still early. You and I have a lot to talk over with one another. No. What is this? This cold, sad face. Sit down. I have a lot to talk over with you. But Nora, you alarm me and I don't understand no! you. No! That's just it! You don't understand me! And I don't think I've ever understood you either until tonight. No, what do you mean by- Shut up! You must not interrupt me. You must simply listen to what I have to say. This Torvald is a settling of accounts. Well, what do you mean by that? Torvald, we have, to, we have been together for these eight years. Mm. Does it not occur to you that this is the first thing that you and I, we two, husband and wife, have sat down to have any serious conversation? What do you mean by serious? I no. mean for eight years. No, even longer than that, ever since our acquaintance, we have never exchanged words on any serious subject. Uh, Nora, was it likely that I'll be continually and forever be telling you of the worries? You, know, you could not help me there. I am not talking about business! I am simply saying that we two, we have never sat down together to try and get to the bottom of anything. But my dear Nora, will it have been any good to you? No, that's just it. You don't understand me. I have been greatly wronged, Torvald. First by you, and then by Papa. What? No, by us too. But who have loved you better than anyone else in the world? You have never loved me. You have only thought it pleasant to be in love with me. No, what are you saying? It's perfectly true, Torvald. No. When I was at home, Papa said his opinions on everything. So I ended up having the same opinions as him. And if I differed, I concealed that fact because I knew he would never like it. He called me his door child and played with me just like I played with my doors. And then when I came here to live with you... What, that, what sort of an expression is that to use about our marriage? I mean that I was simply transferred from Papa's hands into your hands. <laughs> so that you arranged everything according to your own taste. So I ended up having the same trust as you. I don't know. Sometimes I think one or sometimes the other. You know, looking back, it seems to me that I have been living here like a poor woman. Simply from hand to mouth, so that I have merely existed to perform tricks for you. And you yourself would have it so. You and Papa have committed a great sin upon my life. It is your fault, Tobert. It is your fault that I've made nothing out of my oh, life. Oh, how ungrateful you are, Noah. Have you not been happy here? No. Have you not? I've never been happy. Not happy? I've never been happy, Not Tobert. at all? I not happy? I was, but it has never really been so. Not happy? Only Mary. Tobert, our home has been nothing but a playroom. Here I have been your doll wife. Just like at home, I was Papa's doll child. And here, here the children are my dolls. I think it's great fun when you play with me. Just like they think it's great fun when I play with them. That is what our marriage has simply been told. Okay, but Nora, for the future, it shall be different. I promise you, from, from the future, from to now on, play time shall be over and lesson time shall begin. Lesson time for whom you are the children? Both yours and the children's, my darling Nora. Alas, Torvald, you are not the man to educate me into being a proper wife for you. Yeah, and you can say that. And how am I even to treat her to bring them up? Nora! Didn't you just say that just right now? that you dare not trust me to bring them up? In a moment of anger, but why do you pay any heed to You're that? You're perfectly right. I'm not fit for the task. There is another task I have to undertake first, and that is to educate myself, and you are not the one to help me in doing that. I must do that by myself. And that is why I'm going to leave you now. What do you say? Yes, Torvald. No. I must stand by myself if I'm quite to understand myself. And it is for the same reason that I'm not going to stay with you any longer. No, 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 no. Ah, I shall go away from here now. I'm sure Christine will take me in for the night. I won't allow it. Nora, I forbid you. I forbid you. There is no use forbidding me. There's no use forbidding me, Torvald. What sort of madness is this? 
and tomorrow I shall go home. And I mean to my old home. It will be easier for me there to find something to do. Oh, you blind, foolish woman. I need to try and get some sense to over. Nora, to desert your home. Nora, to desert your husband and your children, and you don't consider what people will say. I don't consider that at all. What? I only consider what is necessary for me. Nora, it's shocking. This is how you neglect your most sacred duties. And what do you consider as my most sacred duties? Oh, do I really need to tell you that? Aren't they your duties to your husband and children? I have other duties, just as sacred as Oh, that. those you have not. And what duties could those be? Duties to myself. Before all else, you are a wife and a mother. I don't believe in that anymore. But I believe that above all else, I am a reasonable human being. Or at least I must try and be. Look here, Torvald. I know that most people will think that you're right. And that deals of this kind are only found in books. But I am no longer content with what most people think or what is found in the books. All I know is that I have to try and understand everything by myself. But and that's why I'm not going to stay with you here any longer. No, can you not understand your own place in your own home? Have you no reliable guide to such matters as that? Have you no religion? I'm afraid, Tobal. I don't know what religion is. It's shocking. This is unheard of in a girl of your age. But if religion cannot lead you aright, let me try and awaken your sense. I suppose you have moral sense, or am I to think you have none? I don't know. Yeah. Actually, the whole thing confuses me altogether. I only know that you and I look at it from a quite different light, okay? Look, and I'm also beginning to understand that the law is also quite different from what I thought it to be. According to the law, a daughter has no right to save her dying father, and a wife has no right to dare to save her dying husband. I can't believe that. Oh, you talk like a child. You really don't understand the conditions of the world in which you I live. I know I don't, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and make out who is right, me or the world. No, you're ill. No, I think you're delirious. I almost think you're out of your mind. I have never felt my mind so clear and certain as tonight. And is it with a clear and certain mind that you forsake me and your children? Absolutely clear and certain. Then there's only one possible explanation to that. And what is that? You do not love me anymore. Yes, that's just it. Huh? No, 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 okay. What have I done to forfeit your love? Yes, indeed I can explain, come here. It was tonight. It was tonight that the wonderful thing did not happen. And then I saw that you were not the man I thought you were. No, explain yourself better, Tobin, I don't understand Tobin, you. I have waited patiently. I have waited patiently for eight years, for goodness knows. I knew that wonderful things do not happen every day. And then this horrible misfortune came upon me. And at last, I was absolutely certain that the wonderful thing was going to happen. Towel, when Crockster's letter was lying there in the letterbox, uh -huh. never for a moment did I imagine that you could consent to that man's conditions. I thought that once you found out, uh, you'd tell him, publish the whole thing to the entire world. Uh, and then when that was done... Then! What? What? When that was what, done... What? No, what? I, wait, wait, I was I... absolutely certain you would come forward. Take everything upon yourself and say that I was the guilty one. You, you don't think I could have taken such a sacrifice on your part? Of course not. What would my assurances be worth against your word? That was the wonderful thing that I feared and hoped for. And it is for the same reason that I wanted to kill myself. Oh, no, listen, listen. Uh, listen. Nora, I would gladly work day and night for you. Nora, I will bear sorrow and want for your sake. But no man will sacrifice his love for the one he loves. But that's a thing that hundreds of thousands of women have done. Oh, you talk like a heedless child. Maybe, but you never think nor talk like a man I could bind myself to. You can say that. As soon as your fear was over, and it is not even the fear of what threatened me, but the fear of what you thought might happen to you, when the whole thing was passed, Everything was supposed to go back as if nothing happened. I was to go back to being a Skylark. Your doll, which you will now treat with doubly gentle care because it was so brutal and fragile. It was then that it dawned on me. For eight years, Tobal, for eight years, I have been living here with a strange man. And I've even borne him three children. Oh God, I can't bear even to think about it. I could tell myself I see, I see, no, I see, I see, I see. An abyss has opened between us. Well, there's no denying it. But will it not be possible to fill it up? Tobald, as I am now, I am no longer your wife. But, uh, listen, you're my wife. You're my wife, Nora. Whatever becomes of you, you're my wife. Listen, Tobald, I am not 
your wife. As I am now, I am no longer your wife. No, listen, you're my wife. Whatever becomes of you. Yes, and that makes it all the more certain that it must be done. I'm going. Uh, let go of me. Uh. Well, you can keep the whole house to yourself. No, please, don't go. Yeah? Please. Don't go. Wait until tomorrow. No! Please. I cannot spend another night in a strange man's room. I cannot spend another night in a strange man's oh, room. Can I never be anything but a stranger to you? Talbot, the most wonderful thing would have to happen. What would that be? Listen, Talbot. What would that be? I have heard that when a wife is deserting her husband's home, like I'm doing now. He is free from all his legal obligations towards her. In any case, I set you free. You're not supposed to feel bound to me in any slightest way, any more than a shall. There must be perfect freedom on both sides. And that's why, see, here's your ring back. Now give me back mine. That's true? That's true. Please. No. No, give it. Now it's over. I'll put the keys over there. And the maids know everything about this house even better than I do. Tomorrow after I'm gone, Christine will come and pack up everything that I came with from my old home. And I will have them sent after me. All over. No, all over. Shall you never think about me again? No, shall you never think about me again? I know I shall only think about you. And this house and the children. Well, May I write to you? No, but no, 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 don't. At, at least let me send you something. No. Let me help you if you're in want. I cannot accept anything from a stranger. No, no, can I never be anything but a stranger to you? The most wonderful thing of all would have to happen. Tell me, what, what is that? Our lives. What is that? So that our lives will have to be so changed. So changed that what? That so changed that uh, what? No. What am I even talking about? I don't even believe in wonderful things no, happening please. anymore. So tell me, so changed that what? So changed that what? Our lives will have to be so. Let go of me. Our lives will have to be so changed that our real life together could be a real wedlock. Goodbye, Thomas. Enlightened Thespian Theatre. I bet that you have enjoyed those performances so, so, so much, right? Talent. Nakumuka, this is a shule. How it used to be, how great it used to be. I'm aware of the drama fest. It's okay, it's okay. Whether you went or you didn't go, talk to us on social. Maybe you've seen your former school, maybe you just want to big them up for what they've done. Use our Twitter hashtag, KTL Life and Style, hashtag Artistic Thursday, or message our Facebook page, okay? Now, we're going to take a short little break, but we'll be right back to see some more great performances. Thank <laughs> you.